We're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 1, and then we're going to look at verse 5. Verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went, and they went everyone straight forward. Now look at this. Look at the likeness of their faces. Verse 10. <clears throat> As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of one a man and the face of a lion too on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. So notice right here that they had the face of an ox, lion, eagle, and man. Ox, lion, eagle, and man. So in the last days, there will be doctrines of devils, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible also says at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it is important that in the last days we are to be aware of what Satan's doing in our world and not be ignorant of what he's trying to do uh, to us so that we don't get deceived by his system. So you'll see right here that in the Bible, one of the things about Satan that he has an infatuation with a particular creature you're going to realize. He has a particular infatuation with a particular creature. Now go to Ezekiel chapter 10. I'm going to show you. Go to Ezekiel chapter 10. Ezekiel chapter 10, we'll read verse 14. So we saw Ezekiel 1, and then we also saw Ezekiel chapter 10. But I want you to turn to verse 14. Look at what the Bible says here. And then after that, go to Ezekiel 28. I'm going to show you something here, okay? So we see here four creatures, four cherubs. Now you've got to realize this, Satan... He is known to be a cherub. Didn't you know that? Satan is known to be a cherub. So we're going to start off with Ezekiel 28, and then I'm going to show you something interesting here at Ezekiel 10. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Notice that this is definitely talking about Satan. This is not talking about some regular cherub. Ezekiel chapter 28. We're going to read verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. So notice the Bible calls him cherub. All right? Is that what it says? Cherub at verse 14? Okay. Cherub. He's called cherub. Now look at right here. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14. And I have set thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou wast walk up and down in the midst of the stone of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. Notice, till iniquity was found in thee. Uh, verse 17, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. So notice right here that Satan is likened to the cherub. There's no doubt Ezekiel 28, 14 through 17, this is talking about Satan. This cherub had pride issues, and he fell down. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting here. Go to Ezekiel 10, 14. Check this out. There's a particular creature Satan's going to like. Satan is what again? Remember? What is he? Cherub, right? Okay. Now, check this out. Four cherubims. Now, look how the Bible labels them. Ezekiel 10, 14. And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of an ox or cherub? Cherub. The second face was the face of a man. See, man right here. And the third was the face of a lion. Lion right here. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. Eagle right here. Wait. The Bible didn't say ox. It called a what? Cherub. Remember Ezekiel 1? What did it say? Ox, man, lion, eagle. But Ezekiel 10 switched that to cherub. What's the Bible trying to tell you? The Bible's trying to tell you something here. Cherub is the ox. Hence, that's the reason why in cartoon pictures of Satan, what, is, what does he have? 
Uh, right? All right. So that's right, cleft foot. All right. So in my little bit of poor artist work right here, you'll notice right here that Satan, he has bull horns. That's why the de hence Satan has, devil has horns. That's the idea. But this is very interesting throughout your Bible, how Satan always wanted to be worshipped as God. Didn't you know that? He wanted to be worshipped as God. You might say, really? Yeah, go to the book of Genesis. Go to the book of Genesis. We're going to look at the book of Genesis, and we'll look at chapter 47. Genesis chapter 47. Genesis chapter 47. Look what the Bible says here. Now, if you are a buff in some kind of conspiracy and mythology, where, what's the earliest nation or one of the earliest nations you can think of that had all kinds of demonic activity, sons of God weird activity? You go back to Egypt. Good old Egypt with its pyramids. In the land of Egypt, what was their belief concerning bulls? You ever realize that? Ah, that's good. What was their belief concerning bulls? Didn't you know they had a reverence toward bulls? They worshipped bulls. Where did they get the idea about worshipping bulls? Unless Genesis 6, Satan and the sons of God, those sons of God were walking across the earth, and they taught those Egyptians a way what God to worship. And, Egypt, and Egyptians, they recorded, in, they claimed in their own history, that the gods taught them how to build the pyramids, gave them the lifestyle and the practices. Hey, hey. All right, well, anyway, look at Genesis 47. Look what the Egyptians think. Verse 4, they said, moreover, unto Pharaoh, for to sojourn in the land are we come. These are the Jews talking to Pharaoh. For thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, uh, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and brethren dwell. So notice right here, the Jews can dwell with the Egyptians, but this is based on something. Look at verse 32. Uh, of chapter 46, chapter 46 and verse 32. And the men are what? Shepherds. Okay, so notice right here, Jews are shepherd. These Jews back then were known to be shepherds. Now, here's another thing. Jesus is known to be as the chief what? Shepherd. Jesus is known to be as the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. It's a lamb. It's not a ox, it's a lamb, Jesus Christ is. Why? The reason why is because lamb represents innocence, that cleanness, whiteness. But there's something about that bull. But look what the Egyptians thought about shepherds. Verse 32, And the men are shepherds, for their trade hath been to feed cattle. And they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? That ye shall say, Thy servant's trade hath been about what? Sheep? No cattle. no, cattle. Remember in verse 32, there are shepherds, right? But Joseph told them to say cattle. Why? From our youth even until now, both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is a what? Abomination. Abomination unto the Egyptians. There's, uh, how often have you seen sheep in Egyptian mythology? How often? But how often have you seen bulls, cats, and all other kinds of weird creatures? But not sheep. Shepherds were an abomination to the Egyptians. Hey, hey, go to Exodus 32. Go to the book of Exodus 32. Here, the children of Israel, they got out of Egypt. God told them to get out of Egypt. He didn't want them to stay in Egypt, amen? He wanted them out of Egypt. Why, pastor? Because they're, they're taking a practice with them. They're learning something godless from here. 
They're taking the bull worship. Uh, what was uh, one of the chief religions the Jews always had a problem with? Baal worship. Baal, Baal, bull, Baal, you know, pretty, pretty crazy, huh? Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Always taking Baal worship with them. So close with Baal and bull, it's just so interesting, you know? But anyway, Exodus chapter 32, here they are, away from Egypt. Away from Egypt, God's about to give them Ten Commandments, and these Jews can't just, they can't just wait a month long, and these Jews just have to run to Baal worship, or shall we call it bull worship. Look at this, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Now look what they made in verse 4. Notice they took off their golden earrings, the second part, and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made a what? Molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the what? Land of Egypt. They took something with them. They took bull worship with them. Satan, he is likened to the ox, the bull. Satan, he loves that kind of worship, bull. Why do you think one of the ten plagues of Egypt, God killed their cattle? Man, you killed my God, those Egyptians are saying. God slain the cattle. Why do you think Pharaoh, he told Moses, you can go, but leave your cattle behind? God's like, no, I don't want my own livestock to be corrupted by Egyptian Baal bull worship. I'm going to use those cattle for my own kind of sacrifice someday. I'm not going to let it be corrupted with Egyptian worship, let alone deified. I don't want some cow deified. Why do Hindus deify cows? And they leave cows all over the street. Don't eat the cow. Leave the cow alone. Look at that, all this bull stuff. This Baal bull stuff. But uh, 1 Kings chapter 12, 1 Kings chapter 12. Look at this. Even at the peak of Solomon's kingdom, after the peak of Solomon's kingdom, uh, they still carry on this kind of bull worship. Look at this now. We're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 29. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made an house of high places, and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the what? calves that he had made. This was right after Solomon said, we're going to worship you, God. I created this prosperous kingdom so the nation will worship you. And then he sets up two calves. His bull worship. Satan always follows the tailcoats. Satan always follows the tailcoats. Worshiping bull. Isn't it interesting? Where, is it, uh, where are these two calves set up? Verse 29, one in Bethel and the other put he in where? Dan. That's why in Revelation chapter 7, when the 12 tribes of Israel are mentioned, Dan is not mentioned. Look at Revelation 7 if you don't believe me in your spare time. The tribe of Dan is not mentioned when the Bible mentions 12 tribes of Israel. Why is that? They have bull worship. They got a bull problem. They got a bull problem. Am I hitting a bullseye right here? So you notice right here that Satan, he always has an infatuation with some kind of cows. You always have an infatuation with cows. So Satan, he wants to be worshipped and elevated as God, but God don't give him the credit. God don't give him the credit. You know who he elevates? He elevates, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, he died on that cross, shed his precious blood, and became the Lamb that washed away our sins. Now you jump to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation 5. Worthy is the bull. 
Worthy is the cow. Worthy is the who? Lamb. Ah, but remember, Egyptians thought of shepherds as what? Abomination. Abomination. There, there is no doubt, especially when we went to the, if you go to the Egyptian museum, we went to the Rosicrucian Egyptian museum too, man. I was more convinced that the Bible is real Amen. after that. There's, oh, yeah, bull, brother, all that, all that. Yeah, now you're catching up, brother. Now you're catching up. <laughs> all right, Revelation chapter 5, uh, verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Now, uh, let's keep reading right here. Uh, we're going to read verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the who? Lamb. Lamb, not bull. But Satan wants the bull. Worthy is the bull. Worthy is the cow. No, worthy is the lamb. That was slain. That's what God wants. So, you know what we're going to do at the throne of God? We're not going to be bowing down to some golden cow. We're not going to be bowing down to that fifth cherub who's an ox. We're going to be bowing down to the Lamb of God, and we're going to be crying out, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Amen. But you know what the Bible says about the book of Revelation, what the world does? The world, what they do is that the Bible says, in Revelation, if you look at Revelation 6 and verse 16, notice what the world does. Hide us from the wrath of the who? Lamb. They reject the Lamb. Why? Because they're going to be worshiping the dragon. They're going to be worshiping that bull, Satan. Not only that, in Revelation chapter 13, you're going to find out in Revelation chapter 13, they, uh, in verse 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, that's Satan, that bull, whose names are not written in the book of life of the what? Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See that? They rejected the lamb. They reject the lamb, they turn to the bull. E uh, Egypt is, uh, what men learn from history is that men never learn from history. People say, oh yeah, we've evolved from our past and we're totally different from back then. No, if you look at history, you see human nature repeating its cycle all over again. Egypt rejects the lamb and they worship the bull. Rarely do you see lambs.